Welcome to my latest module overview video, this time of the Ultrawave from Frequency Central. And the LFO's got an electric druid code which is exclusive to Frequency Central. It features an internal clock rate or an external clock rate sync, clock division and multiplication, 8 waveforms, wave shaping and wave distorting, CV over every parameter, attenuators for all the CV inputs and an internal VCA with level input and there's also a clock output which is generated from either the synced clock and the multiplication or division or the internal clock and the multiplication and division. So here I've got a saw wave going into a resonant bandpass filter and the ultra wave is going to the CV control over the cutoff of the filter. I'm going to start with the saw wave LFO and you can hear that cutoff modulation and moving the distort we can move between exponential shapes and logarithmic response. Changing the wave to ramp now and the distort still moves through exponential to logarithmic and you can get a really nice tight exponential shape. The next shape is square with variable pulse width on the distort. and then triangle wave and the distort creates an almost AD type envelope with either a long attack and short decay or short attack and long decay. Moving on to sine wave, it's very similar to the triangle but with much more curvy and rounded shapes. Noise is the next waveform and the distort affects the range of the output. Then we've got sample and hold, which samples the internal noise and the distort bit crushes the output. And the final wave is a step triangle which looks like a pyramid and the distort works in the same way as the normal triangle weighing the curve more towards the rise or the fall of the LFO wave. So this is a really quick patch and on this red stackable I've got a triangle wave LFO going into the waveform CV on the ultra wave just to show how you can cycle through the waveforms with a moving CV source. So I've got an 8 step sequence running which is going to move through the waveforms. The ultra wave is taking a times 2 clock and the division on the ultra wave is set to times 2 as well. The sequence is running at times 1 of the clock rate so we're getting 4 LFO cycles per clock moving through the sequence. <laughs> So I've got a three part sequence set up and one of the roles in this sequence is changing the multiplication of the clock on the ultra wave, the second row is changing the wave shape and the third row is changing the waveform to start. The sequence and the ultra wave are both sharing the same clock and it responds really quickly to all these CV changes. <laughs> And to show how quickly and sort of solidly it syncs and responds, here's the clock at four times the speed, so everything's going to speed up. So sticking with the same sequence, I'm just going to spread the ultra waves output across for more modulation. So I'm now using the E350 wavetable oscillator and I'm also modulating an Opto disc and a Borg 2 filter. So I'll take down the patch that you can hear in the background and we'll go through each part. <laughs> 
I'm morphing the X and the Y position on the E350 through this attenuator. And then morphing the Opto Disc Gain CV. And then the cutoff of the Borg 2 filter. So you can see how easy it is to sort of spread the modulation around and create some nicely tempo synced and varied modulation across the patch. So I'll now look at CV over the clock multiplying and the internal rate of the LFO. I've got a step triangle going into the FM input of an E350 which gives a cool retro gaming style sound. Adding in a slow triangle wave to the multiply CV we can get the time multiplication changing. smoother varied speed changes and not timing related to the internal clock or external if you've got the LFO synced to an external clock. I'm going to take the same triangle LFO into the rate CV and this will change the speed of the internal clock. Sticking with the same patch, here's the sample and hold output with CV over the multiplication. And again, for smoother changes, I'll put the CV into the rate rather than the multiply. And the onboard CV attenuators make it really easy to dial in any changes. I've got a patch set up with a mate noise pressure points, which is sending pitch CV to a quantizer, which is then going into an oscillator. The gate from the pressure points is also turning on a WMD multimode envelope which you can just about see the gate and envelope lights of in the bottom left corner. I've then got the pressure output from the pressure points going into the ultrawave's frequency rate. The ultrawave is going into the oscillator's FM and we're going to use this to create a nice playable expressive vibrato style patch. The levels fading according to the envelope and the rate is changing according to the pressure applied on the pressure point. The gate is also controlling a filter and a VCA which is going after the oscillator just to turn the sound on and off. So we're now listening to the ultrawaves output at audio rate. It gives some duller sounding waves without some of the higher frequencies that we'd expect, but it's really nice and adds some variation to standard VCOs I've got in my setup. So I'll flick through the waveforms and the distort so you can hear all the waves and how the distort affects those. So with the ultrawave audio rate, I'll now plug it into the FM input of an AFG with a triangle wave of the AFG going out to the sound card.
you're now listening to a self-oscillating filter, which is the ripples by Mutable Instruments, and if I take the ultrawaves noise output and add that to the filter modulation, you can hear we're getting this cool type of noise that's slightly different from the noise output on the ultrawave and from more standard noise sources. Just in the ultrawave noise rate and the filter cut off manually we can get all sorts of cool noise and almost vinyl crackle style sound. So using the resonating filter from the previous part of the video, I'm going to add the self oscillating and noise modulated ripples filter into a mix of standard VCO waveforms I'm using to create a simple bass line. Moving the filter you can hear that adding in a nice resonant sweep to the patch and then adding back in the ultrawaves noise waveform to the Ripples FM we get all sorts of cool noise to add to the patch. So I'll adjust the resonating filter and the volume for the main filter which is collecting all of the noise and the waveforms for the bass line. So the noise is slightly louder than I'd actually use it but just to demonstrate how you can get a nice range of varied noise sources to throw at another part of a patch. So the last thing I'm going to look at is a cool trick that Rick from Frequency Central shared with me, which is using the sample and hold. I've got an FM VCO which is going into a VCA, and the VCA is under control of a nice tight envelope, and the gate triggering that envelope is coming from the ultrawave. Using the sample and hold output, the gate will only trigger the envelope when the sample and hold waveform is high enough to pass the threshold in the envelope to actually gate and trigger the envelope. So not all the samples that come out of the ultrawave are going to be high enough to do that, as it's sampling the random internal noise. What's cool is that the sample and hold rate is set by the clock on the ultrawave, which in this case is internal, it could be an external clock source, which is also clocking other sequences. So what this effectively gives us is random triggers that are in time and clocked and synced. Changing the distort knob position, we bit crush the sample and hold output, which affects the range of triggers. As always, thanks for watching this video, head to frequencycentral.co.uk for more information. Hit subscribe for more videos coming soon, and as always, feel free to like and comment.